What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here at About Trout, I do fly fishing how-tos, gear reviews, some vlog stuff, and we try to have a good time. Um, today is going to be kind of a newer format for the channel. So I went out and fished with my buddy Brian Brown. He's got an awesome tying company called The Tree Offering Fly Co. And we went to a river that's pretty known for just smashing a bunch of stalkers. Um, we went with the intention of just specifically targeting wild fish. Um, and you've heard me say it on this channel, trout first approach. Um, and we're gonna kind of go over that through the course of this video, break down the rigs that we use, the flies that we used, and why we picked the water that we picked. Um, so I hope you dig it. This is kind of a new style for the channel. If you like it, let me know. I hope you guys enjoy it and we're gonna do kind of an autopsy. So let's just get in there and, and break down the old day. My, my boots froze from fishing on Sunday, so I'm letting them thaw, major pro tip. So you can see here that I had left my boots in my truck, um, or my Subaru, let's be real, I drive, I drive a Subaru. So we decided to start a day later, especially on these shoulder seasons. Um, the difference between one to three or one to five or whatever the temperature swing is can have a big impact on your day. So I slept in, Brian slept in, we met at a later time uh, to let that sun hit the water and bump it up a couple degrees uh, before, you know, let those fish get active before we started fishing for them. What's going on everybody? We're here in beautiful northern New Mexico. I'm here with my friend Brian Brown, the owner and operator of the Tree Offering Flyco. How's it going guys? We're out here to catch some sea run orcas, Let's see what she does. You can't give away the sea run orca fishery, but yes, we're trying to do that. But today we are fishing a river that has a low density of wild fish. They stock it pretty heavily up at the dam, but today we're gonna kind of pan for gold, try to seek out those wild fish. Um, and there's some tricks to it that might help you on maybe a low density fishery where you live, or hey, if you're here in Northern New Mexico, hopefully this will put some brown trout in the net for you. So you wanna go fish? Let's do it. First fish of the day on a pattern I've been working on called the search and destroy. And this is what we came here for. One of these to me is worth a hundred stalkers. So pretty excited to pick up a brown trout, my first fish of the day. Um, there's not a lot of, it's a low density fishery there. And I know it might seem weird to get so excited about wild fish, but in that system, there's really not a lot. Like a good day would be like a dozen of all day fishing of, of wild fish, you know, or you can go do that in one run over the hill from my house. Um, in terms of the rig that I was using and the rig I used all day, um, I just basically have gone to fishing about 20 feet of 4X bicolor to a tippet ring, and then I'll run anywhere from 5 to 7X off that tippet ring. Um, I started with my heavier fly on the point, which I changed later in the video, um, but just keep it simple. So the advantage of fishing just straight 4X is that you can fish lighter beads at distance better. So in these low water conditions that we've had all summer and into the fall, um, it's been it's been working really well for me. I do carry different leaders and I need to make a video on that, but you know, this time of year, I don't really plan on throwing dry flies. I don't really plan on, you know, doing any dry dropper stuff. So I'm just gonna pretty much be purely nymphing all day. And if for some reason a hatch pops off, I'll switch to a thicker leader where I can throw dries um, on my Shadow X. In a low density fishery like this, I'm just methodically carving through lane by lane by lane. I don't know where the fish are gonna eat, so I'm just gonna hit it with a razor blade. So Brian and I today are just gonna cherry pick the absolute best looking water and hack it up surgically and then move on. So good start to the day. I'm in the meat, why don't you get up in here? Uh, on the search and destroy. Bump. With this river right now, it's cold. Some of these browns, like the one I caught, it's post-spawn. Um, so they're gonna be sulking in this deeper water. It's a lower flow, there's not a lot of them. So it's good to come here at a low flow. It's gonna really compress the fish in terms of where they can actually be holding. So picked up that brown, picked up a stalker, and if you notice, I'm just carving near to far, shallow to deep, just really inching my way across these runs. I'm not a comp guy, so I'm probably not gonna, 
you know, one of the strategies employed there would come be running through this with really light beads. Hold on, I'll get to that point in a sec. Nope, Bobo. And that was another one on that search and destroy. I'm not a comp guy. I'm not gonna come through with super light beads and then make another pass and gradually go heavier. Uh, on a fishery like this, I just, I found it best to just kind of stick and move um, and cover as much water as possible. I'm not limited, you know, to 300 yards. So I'd rather just use my legs and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So trout are gonna change where they hold depending on the season, spawning conditions, things like that. Um, it's cold, it's low, so these fish are gonna be deep. And that is a very relative term. I mean, this run right here might be three and a half feet at the deepest point. All right, I worked across the bank, side to side. I'm gonna walk back out on the same line that I came in on because there very well could be fish holding uh, just upstream of me here. So I'm gonna just take a couple steps up the river and I'm trying to link all my drifts together. Um, and I'm gonna start, start again. And there's fish. The big mistake I see in these fisheries is everyone wants to go straight to the middle of the current. The, the, a lot of these fish I picked up have been right on the edges. It's gonna be the warmest water. So something to keep in mind, and uh, let's see if I can't put any more in the net. I like this lighter stuff so I can fish at distance without the leader pulling my flies out of the lane, especially when we're fishing light flies like we are today. And I'm not really that light. That's on Tasmanian Devil. I was missing a bunch of fish. And I couldn't figure out why and I pulled my hooks up. They were all bent out. That's why you always gotta make sure you tie on good quality hooks. Don't skimp out. Yeah, I tie on falling mill hooks, so I haven't had that problem today. I'm not gonna mention the brand of hooks he's using, but don't skimp on your hooks. Um, he had a ton of eats, and uh, he was missing fish, and Brian's a stick, man. He checked his hooks, both were open up. Hard to catch fish on, on open hooks. All right, just got my second brown of the day. Didn't take long. So, um, we are picking up stalkers in the mix. We're not really targeting them, but that's just the nature of the beast on this river. When you're fishing a heavily stocked fishery with a low density of wild fish, you wanna consider that stalkers and wild fish will stratify. So what I mean is stalkers are raised in a hatchery. They're gonna pot up and just because of numbers, they're gonna force the browns into other parts of the river. So we're targeting kind of shallower edges, drops. Um, it is kind of that spawning season. So we're kind of staying away from the tail outs. You don't wanna rip any fish off reds. I haven't touched any fish on my dropper. So what I'm gonna do is cut off my bottom fly, splice in 20 inches of tippet, so I have both flies in the same band of the column, and we'll see if I can 50-50 now. Okay, so at this point of the day, I picked up my second brown, popped a couple stalkers in the mix, which, you know, great. Um, but the point I, what I noticed is what I knew from the beginning that, you know, trout are cold blooded, it's early in the morning, it's shoulder season. So the fish are gonna be in the lower band of the water column. There were no hatches to speak of to move the fish kind of up into the riffles or up through the water column. Um, because I was picking up all of my fish on my point fly, the fly furthest away uh, from my tippet ring, you know, I decided, rather than fish one fly where the fish are, right, lower down, I'm gonna redo the leader and I'm gonna have both flies fishing in the lower band of the water column. So I think I was running a 2.8 millimeter bead and a 2.4. So all I did um, was from the end of my point fly, cut off the point, and I spliced in about 20 inches of tippet, and I'll show you uh, how I do that. So first, uh, I'll just show you how I add a dropper tag. I don't cut it and splice it unless I'm gonna have to move um, my point fly and my dropper. So my standard Euro setup, like I would go, if this was my main line, I'd come back in with tippet of the same size, right? And we're gonna do a triple surgeon's knot. So I'm gonna cross, maybe I'll do it this way. Cross it over, pull it tight, 
and then I'll take this line, double it over, pull it through the loop, one, two, three, and then seat that. So obviously this is not to scale, but this is how I was fishing in the morning. So I went depth to my point, which would have been here, furthest away from my leader, and then I had this dropper tag up top. I was catching all of my fish on the point fly, which means they were in the deep, the fly that was deepest, right? So I wanna stuff two flies in the lower band of the column. So what I'll do is, you know, I would just come back up here and cut this surgeon's knot. Um, I don't use a knife for this, but this is all that I have. So if I was gonna switch so I wanted both flies deeper, right, I'd just cut my tag end off. And I would come down to the point and now, I mean, there's a break, there's a break in the line. Um, I, I didn't feel like retying it, you certainly can, but that triple surgeon's not again. So I'll leave myself a little tag. So my heavier fly will be there, my lighter fly will be here. They'll fish more horizontally rather than vertically. So two flies in one band, shallow water. Same thing, I'm just gonna double the line over, cross itself and then double the line and feed it through three times. And by cutting my tag off up top, you know, now I can fish two flies in one band of the water column. So that's, uh, that's how that was executed. But um, I hope that info helps. So if you're fishing a low density fishery with a lot of stalkers, just remember the stalkers are gonna push out the brown trout and browns and rainbows will tend to hold in different water types anyway. Brian's first brownie of the day. Yeah. All right, so mission success. We're picking up wild brown trout amongst some of the stalkers that wash down. Um, they also stock lower down in the river. Um, it's warming up, so we're picking up fish shallower up in the riffles feeding. Um, that's transitional water. That's something you want to think about when you're kind of fishing on these shoulder seasons. You know, the water is colder earlier in the morning. They're kind of down deep um, as the water warms up and there's hatches and, and bugs getting active in the riffles. The fish will move up there. Um, we're fishing really light, you know, really fishing that drop. Um, I'm fishing 6x. I got a 2.8 millimeter bead and a 2.4. Uh, Brian's doing the same. Um, he just released another brown trout, so we're gonna stay after it and put some more in the net. So Brian's working the run behind me. So again, the key is we're fishing real light. We're kind of targeting water on the edges because there's a lot of stalkers around. The browns and the bows have stratified. It's fall. Um, I just released a nice pre-spawn fish, all colored up, uh, no fin damage. Um, so they're getting ready to spawn. So they're gonna be in different parts of the river, a little more aggressive. Um, but we've kind of put together the pieces of the puzzle for the day, and now it's just wash, rinse, repeat.
All right, thanks everyone for hanging out on the river today. Um, thanks so much, Brian. Thank you. Oh man, that was an Really awesome. good spots. Oh. <laughs> Shh. Brian's gotta go, I gotta go back. Happy wife, happy life. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. That was a great day on the water with Brian. Um, just a quick recap. Um, my leader was pretty simple. It was 20 feet of Forex bicolor to a tippet ring. Um, Brian was fishing a tapered leader that he had built, but that was a little bit thicker. So I fished a 2.8 millimeter bead and a 2.4 millimeter bead. The flow, I think, was 100 CFS. Um, and Brian fished, I think, double two eights all day. Um, both pretty kind of standard patterns. He fished a Paradigon and a Tasmanian Devil, and I fished a Search and Destroy and a Thread Frenchie in a 2.8 and a 2.4, just because I'm running so light. Um, and we just took advantage of the fact that stocked fish will kind of pot up, push out the wild fish. So really targeting kind of the edges, the heads of runs, really working through um, methodically on each run. But that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you can put some of this stuff into practice. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Really appreciate everything. And uh, I got some fun stuff coming up next week that I can't wait to get out and shoot with maybe a special guest. And um, again, thanks for everything and take care.